Joining me now is the House Democratic leader, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries of New York. He's also the author of the new children's book, The ABCs of Democracy. Leader Jeffries, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Great to be with you. Well, it is great to have you. I want to start with the results of the presidential election. For more than a year now, you have issued really dire warnings about what a second Trump term would look like. Take a look at a little bit of what you've said. It would be a very dangerous, devastating, and destructive thing if Donald Trump got anywhere close to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. The American people should be terrified. Everything that we care about is on the ballot this November. If Roe v. Wade can fall, then anything can fall. Democracy itself, as we know it, can fall. Leader Jeffries, why do you think those warnings didn't resonate with voters? Well, I've congratulated uh, incoming President Donald Trump, and as House Democrats, we look forward to working uh, with the incoming administration whenever and wherever possible to find bipartisan common ground to solve problems for the American people. That's what the American people want us to do, to deliver real results on the issues that matter. But at the same period of time, we will continuously push back against far-right extremism whenever necessary. We will protect Social Security. We will protect Medicare. We will protect the Affordable Care Act. We will protect reproductive freedom. And we will protect the progress that we've made on having a sustainable planet. Let me ask you about some new reporting that's come out. Axios is reporting that some Democrats are frustrated with Speaker Emerita Pelosi's public critique of the party's missteps leading up to the election, saying she needs to let you lead the caucus. One lawmaker went so far as to say, quote, she needs to take a seat. Another said they don't think Pelosi is being, quote, respectful of you. Do you agree? I think Speaker Emerita Pelosi has been incredibly respectful of the entire leadership team. It's an honor uh, to stand on the shoulders of Speaker Nancy Pelosi, an incredibly consequential public servant in the history of America, and to continue to work closely with Speaker Pelosi and, of course, Jim Clyburn and Steny Hoyer. We stand on their shoulders. At the same period of time, you know, as House Democrats, uh, we're proud of the new leadership team. We're looking forward to confronting the challenges that we have to face on behalf of the American people. We're going to focus like a laser beam on dealing with the issues related to working class Americans and middle class Americans and those who aspire to be part of the middle class to make sure that we can build a healthy and affordable economy and help out everyday Americans who for far too long have been struggling to live paycheck to paycheck. That's a team effort and we're gonna dive right in as a team. Very quickly though, do you think she's undermining your leadership with her public pronouncements? No. Okay, that was quick. One of the arguments that Nancy Pelosi made is that President Biden should have gotten out of the race sooner. Do you believe he should have dropped out sooner? I think that President Biden will go down in history as one of the most consequential presidents of all time. And I was thankful uh, for all of the work that we were able to do together. He did make the decision. It was a selfless decision uh, to pass the torch to Vice President Kamala Harris. I think she ran with it uh, and did the best job that she could under incredibly challenging circumstances in a little over 100 days. She came close, uh, but we fell short. And we'll have to figure out through an after action analysis, and we've said, uh, that should be candid and clear-eyed and comprehensive about what was done right, what was done wrong collectively, and most importantly, how do we improve upon our performance so we're in the strongest possible position to solve the real challenges that everyday Americans face and have faced for far too long. The deck has been stacked against the American middle class and those who aspire to be part of it. We recognize that, and we have to deal with it decisively. Well, you take me to my next point, and it starts with your book, your new book, The ABCs of Democracy. This is a children's book. It's based, of course, though, on the floor speech that you delivered outlining democratic values when you became leader. One of the values, and I want to put this up on the screen, is you say, quote, working families over the well-connected. In this past election, Donald Trump 
won working class voters, traditionally uh, Democrats stronghold. Why? Well, it's an illustrated book uh, for people of all ages and hopefully will set forth uh, some values and a blueprint for how we move forward. We clearly have to put uh, working families over the well-connected. Uh, in America, let's be clear, when you work hard and play by the rules, you should be able to provide a comfortable living for yourself and for your family, purchase a home, educate your children, have access to high quality health care, go on vacation every now and then. But Leader and of Jeffries, course one why, day retire with Jeffries, grace and dignity. Why, why did President-elect Trump resonate with those voters instead of Democrats? What were you all missing? Well, that's going to be uh, an incredibly important part of our analysis. What I can tell you is that our focus has and always will be on delivering for everyday Americans. That American dream that I talked about, it's been under assault for decades for a wide variety of reasons. Poorly negotiated trade deals, the outsourcing of good paying American jobs, the decline of unionization, and of course the rise of automation have all jammed up people in the heartland of America, the Great Lakes states, and working families all across the country. And it's going to yeah. fall on Democrats, Republicans, and independents to do something yeah. about it decisively. To me, that's the lesson that I take from the most recent election. I want to ask you now about that report that the House Ethics Committee uh, was set to vote on to release into former Congressman Matt Gates, of course, President-elect Trump's pick uh, to be the next attorney general. Speaker Johnson is now saying that the report should not be released. What's your reaction to what Speaker Johnson is saying? Of course it should be released. And that's not just Democrats saying that. You have repeatedly seen Senate Republicans make clear who are on the Senate Judiciary Committee or throughout that chamber say that they want access to all available information so they can make a decision about whether the nominee for attorney general is qualified to serve in that office. The Senate has a clear responsibility to serve as a separate and co-equal branch of government and a check and balance. That's as America as baseball, motherhood, and apple pie. All right, let me ask you about another pick, uh, President-elect Trump's pick for Director of National Intelligence, Tulsi Gabbard, of course, your former colleague in the House. Here's what Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz had to say about her just this week. Take a look. Tulsi Gabbard is someone who has met with war criminals, violated the Department of State's guidance, and secretly, clandestinely went to Syria and met with Assad, who gassed and attacked his own people with chemical weapons. She's considered to be, essentially, by most, uh, by most assessments, a, a Russian asset. Leader Jeffries, do you agree that she's a Russian asset? Here's what I have to say about several of the nominations that have been made by uh, the incoming president, including uh, the one that Debbie Wasserman Schultz was referring to. The incoming president throughout the campaign promised the American people that we would have the best economy, the best border security, and the best administration possible. The question that has to be asked, is this the best that we can do in the context of some of these nominations? Is this the very best that America has to offer for a moment like this with so many challenges that we confront? So of course not. America deserves better. Hopefully, we'll see the Senate Republicans do their job, scrutinize these picks, yeah. certainly confirm those yeah. that meet the basic level of qualifications, and reject others. Leader Jeffries, you're not willing to say she's a Russian asset? No, that's not how I would characterize her at that, this particular uh, juncture, but okay. I'm open to scrutinizing whatever information is presented to all yeah. of us uh, but this is going to fall on Senate Democrats and Senate Republicans. Very quickly, of course, there's talk of recess appointments. If President-elect Trump tries to push that, is there any recourse that you have in the House to try to block that from happening? What would you do? Well, we will work very closely with our Senate Democratic colleagues. I have great trust and respect in Leader Chuck Schumer and Dick Durbin to make sure that no end runs can be done as best as we can. 
Listen, at the end of the day, we have to stop the brinksmanship, stop the partisanship, stop the bickering and the backbiting. The American people sent a message. They want us to work together to deliver real results and solve problems for hardworking American taxpayers. That's the job that House Democrats will do. All right. Leader Jeffries, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.